Hello and welcome to the special one-off Halloween episode of Crossing Crafts. Now in the spirit of Halloween, I chose to make a sculpture based on the scariest thing I could possibly think of, being in debt. And I hope you enjoyed that cinematic intro because that's how I think it feels to owe money to other people. Now to start, we're gonna make everyone's favorite loan shark, Tom Nook. And the first step is to make an armature, which I'm gonna do with some double wound wire and aluminum foil. You can kind of see the vision, although it's a bit more Slenderman-esque, but since it's spooky season, that gets a pass for now. I'll cover all the foil in an even coat of clay that I can easily build off of and bake it to save my progress. Once he's baked, I can start building his features, starting with his absolutely humongous head. I'll add clay little by little and use my fingers to shape it until it looks just about right. Then I can add his little tanuki nose and bake it one more time. And just a little heads up, every time I bake my sculptures, I sand them down after so they're nice and smooth for the next step. Now we can work on his facial features, starting with his eye mask and ears. For his eye mask, I'll use this little thing of paint to help me make two even circles, and once it's cut out, I'll use some bacon bond to secure it to his face. I'll use a touch of acetone to smooth it out, and then start on his ears. I use a ball stylus to press out the inside and cut off the excess clay near the bottom so they're nice and flat when I attach them. Now it's looking pretty good so far, but now I had to decide what expression I would give him that makes him the most sinister looking while also staying true to character. To do this, I was looking at a bunch of fan art and realized that many people think Tom Nook would be a complete unhinged psycho. I mean, just look at all this. But personally, I think he'd be a lot more lax. I think he'd enjoy the process of beating you senseless and he'd do it all with a smile fit for customer service. More specifically, this smile. So with that decision, made, I cut out two templates and traced them onto a super thin sheet of clay. With his eyes all done, it's time to give him the pot belly of all pot bellies. We want it to look like the stomach you get after you go to the store the day after Halloween and eat a bit too much discount candy, but once we reach that very specific vibe, I sculpt on some tiny tanuki legs. Now that is a glorious stomach, if I do say so myself, but you can't collect debt naked, so let's start to dress him up, starting with his shorts. And these shorts are pretty simple to add, but it looks like Tom Nook is investing in garbage disposal because damn, he's got a big old dump truck now. I solemnly swear to never say that sentence ever again. <laughs> anyway, I give his shorts a seam and drill some holes for his arms. I'll bend some wire to my desired position and cover both of them in clay. Then I can smooth them out with a bit of acetone and poke a hole in the bottom of his outstretched arm for his weapon. And with his arms on, we can add a shirt with a few strips of clay attached with some bacon bond. But then everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked.
Okay, that was a bit dramatic, but I did accidentally go full scorched earth on this nook, and I didn't realize until it was too late, and a lot of him is unsalvageable. Well, that does mean I had to do him all over again, and while that did suck, he looks way better. Like, I changed his head shape and the ears, and I don't know, he just, he just looks better. I even corrected the side that his pants seam was on. With this debacle behind us, we shall continue from the exact place we left off, just with a better looking nook. We're gonna start by giving him all the details for his shirt, like his collar, buttons, and pocket. And finally, we shall sculpt his tail. And I'm so sorry for this part, Mr. Nook. We will be drilling a hole in him to secure it in place. And now it's time for our financially barren villager, and we'll start with him the same way we started with his creditor. For his head, I add clay over a foil ball, and I used a bit too much so I had to shave some of it off, but once I baked and sanded it, I could do the same for his lower half, only his position will be lying down. I'll add some rudimentary legs for now so I can focus on his head, and since his head is in a unique position, I'm using his ears to gauge where everything else will go. Once those are on, I can add a sheet of clay for his hair, and he kinda looks like Morty from Rick and Morty. But once I add his sideburns and cut out the pattern in his hair, he is much more distinguishable. I add some super simple shoes for now, which we'll add more detail to in a bit, and begin giving him clothes, starting with his shorts. Circling back to his face, I give him a face. Then I give him a pair of socks, because clearly my attention span is going through something right now, before I drill a hole through him for some temporary spindly little arms. Then I circle back to his face to add the eyelash lines that border his eyes. I add two back pockets on his shorts before I can finally give him a shirt. Moving back to his shoes, I indent the rubber lines you see on the bottom of them. And if you feel any sympathy at all for the fact that I had to look up these two cursed phrases for this video, then you'll remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Once the detail on his shoes are finished and he has two sleeves for his shirt, we can add his hands and move on to the next part. The base will be relatively simple. The first step is to get a foil frisbee and cover it in clay. This base will be an Animal Crossing island with a layer of grass on top, so I'll add a wiggly rim around the side and smooth it out the best I can. For the layer of sand below the grass, I will be splitting it in two before putting it in the oven. Once it's done baking, I can take it outside and sand it smooth with the help of my goodest boy, Ace. Off camera, I did all the boring stuff to make a community board, and the only thing left is to glue down the top and the little sides that support it. The last thing before we can paint everything is to make Tom Nook's weapon of choice, the Golden Axe. Alright, the first thing we're gonna paint is the community board that's located next to Town Hall. Now when I decided this would be part of the sculpture, I noticed that the posters on the board are extremely boring. And for some reason, I really wanted to flex my poster making skills, so I hopped on an art program and created these six posters. Comment down below which one is your personal favorite. At first, I really couldn't choose, but once I printed them and cut them out, this one won my heart. 
I glued them all on and that means we can start painting the base. Before that, I'm gonna drill two holes in it for Tom Nook to eventually sit in and then I can mix up my paint. This paint gave me a really nice finish, but now we have to add the triangular pattern you see on Animal Crossing grass, and I contemplated a few ways before cutting out a stencil myself and using different colored greens over it to add variation. However, the paper I used for the stencil made the paint bleed somewhat, so I ended up having to retrace every single tiny triangle. Okay, it wasn't actually that bad. I had some old Pokemon anime reruns playing in the background while I painted, which helped the time just fly right by. All right, on to Mr. Nook. I'm gonna give his shirt a bright white and then give his body a few coats of light brown. For his eye mask and eyelashes, he will get a darker brown, and we'll use that same dark brown for his tail and to blend onto the tip of his arms, legs, nose, and ears. Inside his ears, we'll give him a few coats of an adorable light pink, and I never really noticed while I was painting, but looking at him without the tip of his nose being dark is cursed. It's like looking at Mario without a mustache, I hate it. Anyway, for his shorts, we'll give him a State Farm khaki, and it's onto the pattern for his shirt. Now you see, I am very poor at drawing tiny things, so I knew it would be a lost cause to paint the design on, so instead, I printed out the pattern and cut out each individual leaf attaching each one with some Mod Podge. Now onto the villager. I'm first gonna give him a light pinkish skin color. I mixed in a different brand of white paint for this one, and it's probably my least favorite part of the sculpture just because of how textured it is. And I used the same white for Tom Nook's shirt, and that also gave me some trouble with texture. All the other colors I've used were really good. They're like 50 cents each from Walmart, and they're called Apple Barrel Paints if you wanna give them a go, because you really do get a great bang for your buck. Anyway, enough ranting about paint for for the number one decal on the villager's shirt, I also printed that out and just used some Mod Podge to secure it to his back. For villager's hair, I'm giving it a few coats of brown, which I will also use for his eyelash line. I draw on his expression, his mouth, and his nose before moving on to the weapon. Now I chose the golden axe because not only would it be the most expensive and high status, but it also conveniently has the perfect Halloween themed coloring, so I knew it was fate for Nook to wield this axe. And to give it a good finish, I'm mixing up some gold paint and gloss Mod Podge. And finally, before we get to the most fun part of the build, I had to put a little clump of dirt beneath Villager's face so he was properly flush against the ground. Once that was made, I used some super glue to secure everything in its rightful place. With everything glued down, it's time to turn this into a proper Halloween tribute with some blood. And to make this blood, I'm gonna be mixing UV resin with a little bit of red and black paint. And I have a fierce battle with my inner demons not to eat this, but once I conquer them, I start applying the blood wherever I think it'll look best. All right, everyone, I think we've been at it long enough, so let's roll those beauty shots.
And I'd like all of you to put your hands together, give me a drum roll for a special shout out to the first contributors to this channel ever. We have my boy Joey who sent me stuff over Ko-Fi. We have my boy Abram Blanco on Patreon who is an official DIYer, a title bestowed upon him personally by me. And we have Robert who supported me over on Etsy and is now the proud owner of two of my sculptures. So if you would like to be somewhat roasted but also honored with a shout out at the end of my videos or be bestowed a title like DIYer or crafter, consider supporting me on Patreon or making a one-time donation on Ko-Fi, both of which are far less intimidating than taking out a mortgage from a homicidal tanuki. Anyway, that's it from me. I hope all of you enjoy your Halloween and let me know in the comments what you all dressed up as and I'll see you in the next video.